This video is brought to you today by Ghost Tags. This is my own company that I started because I wanted a glow in the dark air tag case. These things are awesome. You can stick them on your backpack, on your dog's collar, and you will be able to find it at night. We've got two colors, blue and green. They've got great reviews. Go check them out. Links to them down below. Now on to the video. Hey guys, what's up? I'm Slim and you're watching Slimothy TV. In this video, we're gonna go over essential iOS 18 settings that you need to turn on right away. Now, many of these settings are new in iOS 18. Some of them have just been rearranged in the settings. So you guys are gonna to wanna to go through and check each one of these and make sure they're enabled. So let's start off with one of the most important but basic ones. Head right in settings, scroll down until you see battery, click on that. And here you're gonna to wanna to make sure battery percentage is turned on. That will give you the battery percentage up there in the top. What's crazy about this is I thought everyone knew about this, but apparently not. Elon Musk posted a video of his iPhone and even he didn't have this turned on. So I don't understand why people wouldn't want to know their exact battery percentage. It helps with battery management. Just keep this turned on. Now, while we're here, we may as well just scroll down just a bit. And if you click on show activity right here, there's a hidden button. And now this is going to show you the activity that an app uses. And you wanna make sure that this number on the right matches the number on the left adding together. So an hour and 18 minutes plus eight minutes background. Yeah, that equals one hour and 26. All of these are looking pretty good. And you wanna make sure that the background time is not very high because that means that an app is just wasting your battery in the background. This is just a pro tip. Go through these and check them out. Now, while you're in settings, back out of here and then scroll down until you see general and then scroll down until you see background app refresh. Click on that. Here, you're going to want to make sure this is turned off. I know this video is called turning on, but just make sure you're just off because most people's is actually turned on you want to keep background app refresh off if you care about your privacy and your battery health. So keep that off. There's almost no apps that actually need that, by the way. I've had it off ever since Apple introduced it and I've never had an issue with any app. All right, so let's check out a brand new, really cool feature of iOS 18 and let's make sure that yours is turned on. Scroll down until you see apps, click on that. Then scroll down until you get to the M's. Then click on messages right here. And once this loads up, scroll down just a bit until you see RCS messaging. Click on that and make sure that this is turned on. You definitely want to keep RCS messaging turned on. This way, if someone has an Android phone and they text you, you're gonna be able to see typing bubbles and read receipt indicators, as well as if they send you a picture or a video, it's gonna come through in high definition unlike with SMS. Typically, if you're texting an Android person, it's more blurry and not as good of a picture. If you enable this and you both have RCS, it's gonna come through looking almost like an iMessage. It'll still be a green bubble, but the quality will be there. Obviously you can turn on RCS business messages as well. Why not? All right, so next up, just go back one page here and you're gonna to wanna to check text messaging forwarding. So click on that and this will allow you to text message forward any of your texts that you get to one of these other devices. So with this enabled, I can get text messages on my iPad and my MacBook, even though they can only really do iMessages, text will also go to these as well. Now you might be wondering to yourself, why would I need this? You know, everyone in my life has iMessage. Well, what about when you get one of those text codes and you have to verify yourself on your MacBook? Well, now you can get those texts straight to your Mac and you don't have to look at your phone. Definitely turn on text message forwarding if you haven't already. Next up, if you scroll just a bit down in messages, you wanna turn on notify me. So this means if someone at mentions you in a group thread, you will get notified even if you have that thread muted. So keep this turned on. You definitely wanna know if someone's at mentioning you in a iMessage group. Now scroll down just a tiny bit here and you will see audio messages expire. I've got mine set to never, but by default, they're gonna be set to two minutes. If you want to be able to have those audio messages last forever in iMessage, definitely leave that set to never. You don't want that on two minutes, unless it's something sensitive, then of course you can change it. All right, this next one is going to improve your Siri experience quite a bit. So what you're gonna to wanna to do, scroll down until you see accessibility and settings. Scroll down in here until you see Siri, it's near the bottom, click on that. And then from here, you're going to want to change the Siri pause time to whatever you'd like. By default, it's actually kind of short, so you might wanna switch it to longer or longest for the pause time between Siri. Another one here is you can always listen for Siri. So listen for Siri or hey blank when your iPhone is facing down or covered. So typically, if your phone's down or in your pocket, it's not going to respond to that, but you can actually turn that on if you want. Just be advised, you will probably get some false positives when you use this, so Siri might go off a little bit more often, uh, especially in your pocket and stuff, so that could be a little embarrassing. Use that with caution if you wanna turn that on. But then two more you might wanna change are require Siri for interruptions. So if Siri's already talking, and maybe you accidentally say something else or your brother or sister, whatever, whoever's next to you accidentally says something and cuts Siri off. That's happened to all of us before and then you just want Siri to continue talking. Well, now you'll have to say Siri again in order to interrupt Siri. So this is something most people should probably turn on and then listen for atypical speech. So maybe you're not the best speaker, you have some sort of disability or maybe Siri just doesn't understand you that well. You can turn on listen for atypical speech it should be a little bit better at understanding you. All right, this next one is really cool and most people don't even know it exists. If you scroll down until you get to accessibility, click on that, then click on motion here. You can toggle these on or off if you want. This will autoplay 
animated images, video previews, or effects. So if you have some friends that tend to send you things that you possibly shouldn't be looking at in public, you might want to turn off autoplay video previews, but you could leave the other two on. I personally am not in that situation, so I'm all good to have all three on. Now, while we're still in accessibility here, if we scroll down just a bit to touch, right here, you're gonna to want to enable reachability, especially if you have the Pro Max phone. The phone is so big, it's almost impossible to use one-handed. I mean, it probably is, unless you're LeBron James, but with reachability on, you can just swipe down at the bottom, easily click whatever you need, uh, and then just click anywhere, and it will go ahead and go back. So reachability is a must. But let's scroll down just a bit more, and you'll see prevent lock to end call. This means if you're on a phone call, Sometimes you accidentally bump the lock button and it ends the call. That's super embarrassing. This will prevent that. And I've had this on for a long time. I definitely prefer it. So you're going to want to turn on prevent lock to end call. Then if we scroll up just a tiny bit here, you'll see tap or swipe to wake. Basically means you can tap or swipe the screen to wake it up. You want to leave that enabled. All right, this next one is pretty neat as well. If you scroll down in accessibility and you click on vocal shortcuts, this is going to be off by default. But if you turn this on, you will go through this little setup prompt and you can choose whatever you want to happen. So you can have it be a Siri request or you can have it choose any of your different shortcuts or any system actions like launching the action button, camera, flashlight, whatever you want. So let's just choose flashlight and then you can make up your own phrase. So whatever you want it to be, flashlight turn on. And then anytime you say flashlight turn on, your flashlight will turn on every single time. You don't have to press anything on your phone. Your phone will always just listen for that shortcut. So you can think of a million different scenarios where you want your phone to do something without you having to press it. This could be clutch, especially for police encounters. You could have it automatically open your camera or something like that, especially when cops don't want you touching your phone. Again, it's called vocal shortcuts and it's off by default, but it's under the accessibility settings, vocal shortcuts right there. All right, these next tips are very important, so pay attention. Click on apps, scroll down until you see Safari, and there it is, we'll click on that. And in here, you're gonna see a little bit of Apple intelligence, first of all. If you want to actually use that, you're gonna to wanna to scroll down just a bit until you see highlights. So you can turn on highlights here if you like, but I also recommend keeping fraudulent website warning turned on and also prevent cross-site tracking. These will help you on the internet so that you're not tracked across different websites and so that you don't accidentally go to a fraudulent website, this will help. All right, next up, while we're in Safari, you're gonna click on advanced. Now, don't worry, we're not gonna mess up anything here, but me personally, I like to keep advanced tracking and fingerprint protection on all websites. Some people just do private browsing, I think that's how it is default, but you might wanna change that to everything just for that added protection. On top of that, you're going to want to turn off privacy preserving ad measurement. This trips a lot of people up, but if you have this toggled on, it's going to still allow ad measurements, but they call it privacy preserving. I don't trust that. I don't want any of that. I don't want any tracking. I don't want any ads like that that turned off. I also turn on check for Apple Pay and of course keep JavaScript turned on. Otherwise you'll break half the websites. All right, now let's back out of this and let's go scroll back up here to action button. If you have one of the newer phones, of course you know about the action button. It's really cool. But what's new here is if we scroll over, we can actually see controls. This is brand new to iOS 18. If you click choose a control, you'll be able to go through any of your different controls, including shortcuts and link them to your action button. This is really cool and makes the action button even more powerful. Me personally, I keep mine set to the flashlight because that's what I find the most convenient. I use it all the time. But with controls, you can now actually map that to many more things and it's very useful. So check that one out for sure. All right, now this next one can take your photo game up a notch. So let's talk about it. Let's go into camera here. And then we're gonna scroll down just a bit until we see portraits in photo mode. Make sure this is turned on. What this is going to do is it's going to gather all of that depth sensor stuff that this awesome camera system can do, and it's going to save it in regular photos. That way, if you take a photo and you forget to use portrait mode, which I do all the time, I'll take a photo of someone and I'm like, shoot, I wish I would've used portrait mode. It would've looked better. It would've blurred the background. No, you don't have to worry about that because now if you have this turned on, you can go back into that photo after you take it and press a button and boom, you've got portrait mode on that photo because Apple was smart enough to save all that information to turn it into a portrait photo at a later time. This is so clutch. Keep this turned on. Highly, highly this recommend is, it. This next step is going to save you a lot of time on the web. You're going to click on your name at the top here, then click on sign in and security right here, then click on automatic verification. This is going to allow you to bypass pretty much every captcha on the internet by automatically filling them out for you. This has saved me a ton of time and I highly recommend turning it on. If you haven't already, you'll thank me later. Right. Trust me. All right, now we're backed out of this again. This is just a settings screen. Click on your name again at the top here. This time, click on iCloud. Now, once you're in here, you're going to scroll down until you see private relay. Now, a lot of people keep this off, myself included, but it does actually add a little layer of privacy and security to you when you are browsing the web. So if you want to turn it on, it's like a mini VPN. So if you're not already using like Proton VPN, iVPN, or Molvad VPN, you might want to consider using this, especially if you already pay for iCloud. May as well just enable it because it is free if you do have it. 
I don't use it because I've got some other protections in place that I use instead of this, but for the average person, this is something that might actually help you. Again, it hides your IP address. Now, if we back out of that, the next thing you wanna turn on is iCloud backups for your phone. If you're not backing up your phone automatically to your computer when you plug it in, you're gonna to want to turn on iCloud backup. Uh, this is going to make a backup of your phone and keep it in iCloud. So if someone steals your phone or if your phone accidentally gets run over by a bus or something, you can just go to the Apple store, buy a new iPhone and easily pull it down from the cloud and everything will be backed up for you. Now, in case you're wondering why mine's turned off, it's because I'm actually getting rid of iCloud Plus. I'm trying to get rid of the $10 a month fee. I just don't need it. I've got my own server. I'm just gonna back up all my stuff to that. Why should I pay Apple when I just have my own server? I can just do it for free. So that's what I'm gonna do. But for you guys that don't have your own server, definitely take advantage of this. All right, enough talk about iCloud. Let's talk about passwords. All right, so for this next one, we're gonna scroll until we see apps. We're gonna scroll down until we see passwords right here. Click on that. And you're gonna scroll down until you see view autofill settings. Now, right here, you're going to want to make sure if you use Apple passwords, that Apple passwords is turned on and all the others are turned off. Me personally, I use one password. So I keep one password turned on and Apple passwords turned off. So it just depends what you use but you want to make sure that the, the one that you use, everything else is turned off, otherwise they interfere and it causes issues. So set yours up like this. If you use Apple's, again, turn this one on and this one off. I use one password, so I turn Apple's off. I keep one password on. On top of this, you're gonna to want to turn on autofill passwords and pass keys. It makes life a lot easier. And lastly, keep delete after use turned on. That means if you autofill one of your multi-factor authentication codes, it'll just automatically delete that email or that text message. Super convenient. All right, so let's head into general now and let's click on airdrop. Now in here, you're going to want to possibly turn on or turn off, bring device together. So if you bring two phones together, you can easily airdrop if you want. I keep it turned off because I have so many phones in the studio. I don't need them going off all the time. But hey, if you use that a lot, turn it on. And personally, I keep on use cellular data. I think this is awesome so that if you go out of range, after you start airdropping, uh, it will just continue working. All right, we'll back out of that and we'll click on AirPlay and continuity. So if you have a Mac, you're definitely gonna wanna turn this on. If you have a HomePod, obviously keep this one on. This will allow you to easily hand off your items that you're working on from your phone to your laptop at any given time. Super easy to do, you just click the little button in your dock on your Mac. Continuity camera is cool as well. You might wanna turn that on, again, if you have a Mac. All right, this next one, again, is very important, so pay attention, we got cellular here, let's click on that. Then click on your primary line, and once you're here, you're going to want to make sure limit IP address tracking is turned on. Now, if you're in the US, you might want to turn on data roaming, if you are planning to go on a vacation, of course, check with your carrier first to make sure that this is going to work. But like in my case for Verizon, data roaming turned on is a good thing. So I should probably turn that back on. Now, when I go out of country, I like to turn that off so that I'm not charged a bunch of extra fees for this line. That's one of the keys that you need to understand if you're ever going overseas, like to Bahamas, Europe, Asia, anywhere else besides the US, you're going to want to pay attention to data roaming. That is what's going to cause fees or lack thereof. So in the US, you're cool to turn it on. If you're leaving, you probably wanna turn it off. So I have mine turned off for now, but most people probably wanna keep that on. All right, so let's reset. We're back to the settings menu here. Click on cellular once again. This time, scroll all the way down until you see Wi-Fi assist. If you have an unlimited data plan, go ahead and turn that on. Even if you don't have unlimited, uh, if you have a high data cap, you're probably gonna to wanna to turn that on. What that's gonna do is when you are leaving your house and you're bridging the gap between Wi-Fi and cellular, you know how sometimes your phone kind of cuts out when it's leaving Wi-Fi and heading onto cellular? This will help ease that transition so that you don't lose connectivity quite as much. So you might wanna turn that on, try it out, see how much data it uses every month. It's been off for a while and it's only used 327. What's weird is it does actually use some even if you turn it off. Kind of weird, Apple still kind of forces it, but it barely uses anything, so it doesn't really matter. But keeping it on can give you a better experience. All right, this next tip can protect you from being tracked across different Wi-Fi networks. So you're gonna to wanna to click on Wi-Fi here, then click on the little I next to your Wi-Fi network name, then where it says private Wi-Fi address, click on that. And for your home network, you're gonna to wanna to set that to fixed, but for every other network, it should always be set to rotating just so that it always changes and it's harder to track you. Uh, fix is good because it gives you a fake MAC address on your own network, which is good so that your network doesn't even know your real MAC address. But again, you probably don't want it rotating on your own network. So just leave it to fixed on yours and rotating on everyone else's Wi-Fi network. All right, two more tips here. Let's scroll all the way down until we get to apps. Scroll down until you get to photos, click on that. And once you hit use face ID, that's the one you're gonna to wanna to toggle on. This will let you use face ID to get into your hidden and recently deleted albums. That way you don't have people snooping on your stuff. So definitely turn next that up. on. All right, next up, we're back on the main screen. This is the last tip. Click on control center. Now you'll notice there's no way to customize your control center because you do that all up here now. But you wanna keep this turned on. That way if you're in another app, like let's say Netflix and you're watching a movie and then you need the flashlight for some reason, you can easily get to your control center and toggle that if you need. 
If you have this off, you won't be able to get to that. So there we go. That has been all of the iOS 18 settings to turn on right away. I'm going to be doing one to go over all of the settings to turn off very soon. So subscribe to the channel. Keep it locked here. If you like the video, hit the big thumbs up and subscribe. Share this with your friends and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.